He went about doing what? He went about doing good. Amen. What well, one, one of the good things that he did? What was one of those good things? Well, of course, ministering and healing to people, but he fed the 5,000. Hey, Amen. Don't you think that's a pretty good thing? And um, he walked on water. I think that's pretty good too, isn't it? Could he have walked on water before he was anointed with the Holy Spirit? No. Not on his mission on the earth as he was sent. He couldn't do that. Jesus never healed little birdies when he was a child. I'm going to tell you that right now. I might have some people. You know, when he was a little girl, when he was a little boy, there was a little sparrow, and it fell down. It got, it was, you know, died, whatever. And Jesus, when he was a little, he went over there and he touched the sparrow. See, but there's these writings out there. It's called the 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 the, the lost gospels of Jesus Christ, or whatever. Excuse me, they need to stay lost because they're not. You know, the Bible says this, that when he, the first miracle that he did, the first, say first. The first miracle that Jesus did what he's, was he turned the water to wine. Amen. And nowadays, if you would have had a glass of that wine, people would have been mad at you and offended at you. How dare he drink wine? Jesus turned the water to what? To wine. And the Bible says this, this is the first miracle. This is the first miracle that he had done. And it didn't happen until after the Holy Ghost and the anointing came upon him. And then that's when the thing started happening. Amen. And you ain't going to do any miracles or signs and wonders until you receive the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And I want you to know, I, I trust that most every one of you have done it. So therefore, you have dunamis power on the inside of you. You have miraculous power. You have the power to influence change in someone, or say it, something. Amen. How many of y'all know your jobs are a something? Is your job a something? Is your calling a something? Your career a something? Whatever it is that you do with your money, is that a something? That's right. And guess what? The anointing of the Spirit can influence that. If you apply the word of God, amen, by faith. So looking again here, we have um, Acts chapter 1 and verse, or actually uh, John 20, uh, John chapter 20, and I believe it's verse something. It says, as the Father has sent me, that's what Jesus said, as the Father has sent me, so I send you, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Amen. As the Father, look at that. Jesus said, as I was sent. The same way I've sent, I'm sending you. Some people say, well, you know what? That's different because they were the apostles after all, and that's why they got the anointing. Well, then after you, if you read the rest of the story, Jesus said this, now go into all the world and preach the gospel and teach them to observe the things that I have told you. So it passed on, and it, it was deposited into the church. That same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you and me. Say, I have resurrection power. You know what? By the power of God and the anointing of God, a vision that has died on the inside of you can come back to life again. Do you understand? Amen. Or you can get a brand new vision or a brand new dream. And uh, if anything today, I want you to dream big. Amen. I want, you to, I want you to think big if I can help you with that. Hallelujah. Based upon the word of God. So the anointing of the Holy Ghost is the power to influence every area of your life. The anointing of God will make you a winner, not a loser. Do you understand? Yes. Amen. But, you know, you need to think like a winner. And uh, if anything, today, if I, when I make reference to a person of influence, I'm going to make reference to a person of, of, that has a winning attitude, a winning mindset, and not a defeated mindset. And so many believers... I just call them kind of unbelieving believers, have a defeated mindset. Maybe that's what they've been taught. So uh, maybe I can preach something into you today, and hopefully, if need be, I can preach something out of you. Amen? 
Don't get quiet on me. Give me an S and amen. amen. All right, so here's 1 John chapter 2 and verse 20. Uh, it says this. It says, but you have an unction from the Holy One, and you know all things. Amen. Who's he writing to? He's writing to the church. Chapter 2 and verse 27 of the same book, 1 John, says, but the anointing which you have received of him, have you ever received it? abides or lives inside of you, has taken up residence on the inside of you, and you need not that any man teach you, but that same anointed teaches you what? Come on. All things, not some things, but all things and everything. And it's truth and it's no lie. Even as it's taught you, you shall abide in him. So here's the thing. I mentioned you last week. I think I finished with this. You've been filled to what? Spill. Ah, God bless you. Amen. You've been filled to spill, and you have an unction to what? Amen. Some of you are listening. You had an unction to function. Praise the Lord. The rest of you didn't come back. I don't know. Would I offend somebody or what? Look at this. You are anointed to be a parent. Did you know that? You have an anointing to parent. You have an anointing of God to be a husband or a wife. You're anointed to do it. And if you need, if you need to stir yourself up with that, you should stir yourself up with that. Amen. We're anointed to win souls for Jesus. We're anointed to serve God. We're anointed to minister at whatever capacity it is that God has called us to minister. And um, I, got, I was able to get to this in the, in the first service, but not able to get to it in the second service. But here's something that I found to be inspiring. And it was a testimony. It was a, well, it's not a story. It's just, it's just a testimony. It's a true story, I should say. And um, it's about a young man, and I'm going to give you a couple of these. It's about a young man that went to a conference. And it was a conference about the anointing of God. And the person that was preaching this conference was T.D. Jakes. And he did a whole conference on the anointing of the Spirit of God. And uh, as the conference was wrapping up, you know, the thing that was really summed it all up, the whole conference was this. It was a statement that you are anointed to do whatever you do at a level that's unfamiliar to the world for the glory of God. And he kept driving that home. Every one of you are anointed to do what you do at a level that's unfamiliar to the world for the glory of God. And there's testimonies all over the world of people, of believers, that got a hold of faith and the unction and anointing of the Spirit and applied their faith to it. And it took them to levels they had never been able to achieve before they got a revelation of the anointing of the Spirit that abides within them. And so this young man was going home with his dad. And he said to his father, he said, Dad, do you think that I could apply what Pastor T. Jakes is talking about to playing football? Is it fair? Can I do that? He said, I don't see any reason why you can't do that, son. So he did. He did. He, he adopted that statement. And he began to say over himself, God, I thank you that I'm anointed to play football at a level that's unfamiliar to the world for the glory of God. He said it again and again and again. He confessed it and spoke it over himself. But he, that didn't mean he sat around the house and did nothing and confessed it. He practiced. He studied. He worked at what he was, had a passion for. And, but hap, what happened is that anointing began to sort of kick in. Some things started to kick in. And he began to do better than he was able to do before. And uh, the, the reason why I've given this testimony, or I'm sharing this, is because of a person that was watching the TV show. But anyway, I'm gonna, it was, it was a TV show. Uh, it, was a, it was an interview with, I believe it was ESPN. And so he went and he, um, he applied these principles and then he went to college and he won the Heisman Trophy. And he went from college and got drafted to the NFL and became a very well-known running back. And so one day he was on this television show and he was being interviewed. I got ahead of myself. He was being interviewed. I don't know if it was by Jim Rome or whoever it was, but it was an ESPN program. And the question was asked him, what is your secret? What, what, what one thing would you say has contributed to your success 
and to get you where you are today. I mean, you're a Heisman Trophy winner, and then you, you know, you're do, doing what you're doing in the NFL. What would you say? And he says, well, let me share you a, a story. I went to a conference, and he began to tell the story about going to the T.D. Jake conference, asking his dad about it. And he says, and I began to say over myself, because I'm a child of God, I'm born again, that I'm anointed. I'm anointed to play football at a level that's unfamiliar to the world for the glory of God. And you know what? My game began to change. Everything began to change. I got better at what I was doing. I was doing better than I was before I was making that confession over myself. And he says, and so I'm going to say this, that that is a one thing that I can say that I do that other people don't do. I speak over myself. I'm anointed to play football at a level that's unfamiliar to the world for the glory of God. And he gave honor and glory to Jesus Christ. So what happened was, is while that interview was going on, there was a coach. He was a high school coach. And he had a, and he watched it. And got stirred up about it because this high school coach, of course, was a believer. And I'll tell you who it was. It's Chip Brim. He was, he's uh, Billy Brim's son. Anybody know who Billy Brim is? Some of you do. Amen. Well, Chip Brim, he's watching this interview. So he gets on the phone and he calls one of his, you know, players. And he's, he's a, just a young man. He has a passion for basketball, but he's not that good. That's part of the testimony is he didn't play very well. And I thought, man... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this out there, and I know this young man is a believer, so I'm going to tell him about the testimony. So he calls him on the phone and says, listen, I just watched a testimony, and it was a testimony. It was Reggie Bush. Reggie Bush gave testimony running back about how he watched, and he went to this conference, and he told him all about it. And he says, now, you can do the same thing. I believe you can do this. Why don't you try that? And so he grabbed it in his heart. It connected with his heart. And he began to confess over himself, God, I thank you. I'm anointed to play basketball at a level that's unfamiliar to the world to the glory of God. This is in Oklahoma. And so by and by, he got better and better. He practiced probably more than anybody else practiced. But he spoke the word of faith over himself. He said, God, I thank you. I'm anointed. I'm anointed to play basketball at a level that's unfamiliar to the world to the glory of God. And guess what? That anointing hit that boy. And he began to score and shoot like nobody could score and shoot. And he started setting records that nobody said. He started breaking records in Oklahoma, took his, his, his team to the state championships. By the end of his high school career there, he had received, I believe it was over 20 full-ride scholarships to universities across the United States. No, not 20, excuse me, over 200, 200 full-ride scholarships. If you go anywhere... And, of course, he did the same thing throughout college. And you go back and you look up his name. His name is Rotney. Say Rotney. Like Rotten, Rotten, Rotney, Rotney Clark. Amen. His name's Rotney Clark. You can look up that and look at uh, his testimony. But people ask him the same question. We're talking about being a person of influence. Amen. You want to influence for the kingdom of God. Why not be successful? Why not, why not be anointed or receive the anointing and act or activate the anointing that's in you for success? So that when people ask you, what is your secret? How are you able to do what you do? You can say, well, let me tell you a story. Amen. And then, of course, then there was another gentleman that did the same thing because he heard about Reggie Bush's testimony. He heard about Rodney Clark's testimony. And here, this was a guy that had received a small inheritance, and he really, really wanted to put the money in the kingdom of God. But he was thinking to himself, why can't I just invest this money and make it grow and then continuously bless the work of the kingdom of God? And so he got to praying about it, and the Lord said back to him, what, what do you love to do? It turns out he loved popcorn. I love popcorn, and he liked to experiment with popcorn and make popcorn, and so the Lord stirred his heart up about that. Well, then, of course, he had heard this testimony about Reggie Bush and Rodney Clark and about being anointed to do it, so he started, and he grabbed that for himself, and he started to confess over himself, I can make popcorn in Jesus' name. I'm anointed to make popcorn at a level that's unfamiliar to the world for the glory of God. 
And he spoke that over and over for himself. And he began to experiment. God began to give him some ideas on how to make gourmet popcorn. And sure enough, by and by, you know, he started giving it away and started selling it at little small ball games, little league and things like that. And one day, come on, this is what happens when you confess the word over yourself. Something has to happen. Something has to happen. You have to be, you, you, you need to be at the right place. Come on. At the right time. All the time. Concerning all things. Did you know you're anointed to be that? And he happened to be at the right place because he confessed over that. I'm anointed to make popcorn. At a level that's unfamiliar to the world for the glory of God. And guess who comes along? I don't know his name, but it turns out to be an NBA player. And it's not anything to do with Rodney Clark in this particular case, but an NBA player. And he tastes and he eats this popcorn. And he gets so excited about this popcorn. And so what happened is this guy that has this dream of making popcorn and being anointed to make popcorn, he ends up getting favor with this person. I said flavor with this person. Are you with me? Yes, that's right. The flavor of God was on it. And so this fellow got so excited about it, he went to whoever he had to go to to talk about this guy's popcorn. So sure enough, an offer was made to him to produce that popcorn at an NBA game. People got so excited about his popcorn that he ended up getting a contract all across NBA. Here is this little popcorn with his little inheritance that he had, and he invested in this, and then he became so anointed to make popcorn, better than anybody makes popcorn, at a level that's unfamiliar to the world for the glory of God because he tapped in to the anointing of the spirit that's on the inside of him and began to say these things. And what happened? Where did you get this idea? How are you able to make popcorn like you do? Look at the success you have. The guy's extremely wealthy beyond his wildest dreams. Somebody had said to me, and I don't know, I hadn't confirmed it or not, but it, they seem to say that the, those, the popcorn that you see at Costco and those big cones, those big flavor popcorn, stuff like that, had something to do with this guy. Pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. Say it, I'm anointed to do what I do at a level that's unfamiliar to the world for the glory of God so that I could be a person of influence. Amen. So then after this, this revelation that's starting to sweep through the body of Christ uh, has, has taken hold, uh, the same brother, Chip Brim, he's out there and he was preaching in Los Angeles and he needed to get a ride uh, to the airport and end up taking a cab to the airport. So of course, as any minister will do, he makes, strikes up a conversation with a cab driver wanting to locate where he's at spiritually. Turns out the cab driver's a believer, he's a Christian. So by and by, he found out what he was doing, why he was in Los Angeles. Turned out he moved to Los Angeles because he had a dream and a vision to be an actor. And he said, well, I'm a struggling actor. I haven't really gotten any roles or anything like that. And he said, well, let me, you know what? I think I can help you. Let me tell you something. And so on the ride to the airport, he tells this taxi cab driver about Reggie Bush, anointed to play football, Rodney Clark, anointed to play basketball, the popcorn man, anointed to make popcorn at a level that's unfamiliar to the world. And he starts saying, you know what you ought to do? You ought to tap, on, tap into the Holy Ghost and the anointing of God that's in you because you are a child of God. And begin to confess over yourself, I'm anointed to be an actor at a level that's unfamiliar to the world for the glory of God. And so he showed that, dropped him off at the airport. Sometime later, he gets, he, this, this guy contacts him and says to him, to Chip, I want to let you know what's been happening in my life since that taxi cab drive. He says, I took what you said, and I began to apply it. And say, so up until that point, I'd never been able to really land anything significant, audition, it just never worked out for me. But I began to confess, and I held on to my dream, and I continued to confess over myself, I'm anointed to be an actor at a level that's unfamiliar to the world for the glory of God. And I never let go of that. And he says, in one day, I had this opportunity, and I auditioned for a small role. And uh, it went so well. Everything went so well. It just fell into place. And he says, and what happened was that role opened up a door for me to audition for a major network television program. He says, I got it. 
I want it. I'm there. And today, that person is on television probably every, you know, every week and moving forward in his vision and in his dream. Say it with me. I'm anointed to be a winner and not a loser. Amen. And so God has called us, you know, to walk in these high places, not low places, you know. But God wants to take you up to a whole nother level. And if anything, I want to impart to you today is this, is that have that, have, if you're going to be an influencer, if you're going to be a person that has, uh, that, that, that's a winner, you need to have the right attitude. Amen. Because some people, this is what happens to them, is they hit a wall, things don't work out quite as the way they had expected, and uh, they let it defeat them. And I remember someone preaching a message, this is back in the 1980s, and there's some things that he said, I never forgot. You just hear it one time, you never forget it. And he was making reference to that. And so what happens is, is that because you've had certain disappointments, maybe what we would call failures or setbacks, people quit and they just give up. And he says what happens is that becomes a tombstone in their life. And you have to have the right kind of attitude. Because your attitude, listen, your attitude is either your best friend or your worst enemy. And so if you don't have the right attitude when it comes to setbacks and failures, then that setback and failure will become a tombstone in your life. But if you have the right attitude about things, then that setback will become a stepping stone in your life. So the question is, is it a tombstone or is it a stepping stone in your life? You're the one who decides on that. I like this statement too as well when it comes to just attitude. And it, it, the, the statement is this. Let me read it. It says, attitude is a library of your past, the speaker of your present, and the prophet of your future. I learned that from Dr. Anderson in his book, How to Become a Millionaire God's Way. Amen? Attitude is what? The library of your past, the speaker of your present, and the prophet of your future. I want to wrap it up with this. Habakkuk chapter 2, and we're going to look at uh, verse 4. Habakkuk chapter 2, actually verse 2, and we're going to read down to verse 4. It says this, it says, Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision, make it plain on tablets, that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come it will not tarry. Look at verse 4. Behold the proud, his soul is not upright in him, but what? The just shall live by his faith. Do you agree with that today? All right, so here's the thing. If we're going to be people of influence, we need to be people of vision. Amen? And a people of influence always keep the vision in front of them and before them. And one good example is this. A young man who dreamed, this is another actor success story, but this young man had dreamed of being an actor, but in early 80s, he wasn't getting the big parts that he wanted. So broke, busted, and disgusted, amen, and, and discouraged, he drove his beat-up car to the top of the hill overlooking the city of Los Angeles and did something unusual. He wrote himself a check for $10 million, and in the memo, he wrote, acting services rendered. This young man had grown up so poor that his family lived in a Volkswagen van at one time. So he put the check in his wallet, kept it there, and when things got tough, and things were already tough, but when things got even worse, he'd pull it out and he'd look at it and remind himself of his dream. A dozen years later, the same young man, he's a comedian named Jim Carrey, was making 15 to $25 million per movie. What do you see in that? What I see is this. Now, the Bible says it rains on the just and the unjust alike. Even though this man doesn't claim faith in Jesus, you know, and in some ways he's even done things that, you know, would grieve your hearts toward the things of faith. But what he did do was he tapped into kingdom principles biblical principles and he kept the vision before him and he was walking in faith that he didn't realize he was walking in. Amen. And so if someone that's unsaved that doesn't have the anointing of God, hello, can do that, then what can you and I do? Amen. So studies tell us that we move toward, listen to this, write this down as a nugget of truth, that studies say 
that we move toward what we consistently see. Are you listening? We move toward what we consistently see. So we should always keep something in front of us, even if it's symbolic, to remind us of what we're believing for. And in conclusion of my conclusion, conclusion, I will say this. Don't find yourself suffering from a particular disease. What disease is it? It's a, I mentioned it on Wednesday night. It's a disease called destination disease. Destination disease. In other words, don't settle. Don't be at a place where you go, okay, I guess this is my lot in life. This is all I have. This is what's available to me. And I've got to make the best of it, and that's it, and settle in where you're at. You know what? I don't know about you, but I don't want to stay at the same level. And I have. I've been in them places where I had destination disease. And I want you to know I got delivered from it. I got healed from it. Amen. I snapped out of it. I'm not done. I want you to know, for me personally, I'm just barely getting started. Amen. Because there's so much more that God has. And I'm going for it. I'm going after it. Amen. I am going after it. And not going after it. I'm going after him. Amen. But I want you to know I'm anointed. It may not look like it at times. But I want you to know that I'm anointed. And I confess this over myself. I'm anointed to preach the gospel. At a level that's unfamiliar to the world. To the glory of God. Amen. I speak that over myself. I decree it over myself. I'm still waiting for it to come to pass, but it'll come to pass. Amen. I get a little sprinkling here and there every now and then. No, I am anointed. I'm anointed what I do. And I'm not going to take anything away from what God has done. Because what I say, the fact that I just even stand here before you is the anointing of God. Because I don't have that natural ability to do that. Some people seem to have that. I don't have that. God looked at me. I feel like a Gideon. I have the least of the families, the smallest tribe, the least of the tribes, the least of the families in the tribes, and I'm the least of the, of, the, of the ones in my family. And God looked at me and says, I want you. You're the one. You know why? Because he knows that I know that I can't do anything that is of any significance without him. And you have no idea how many times I remind him, God, remember now, and I've been saying it ever since for over 30 years, I can't do anything that I do in that pulpit or even minister to people without you. I can't do it. If I do it, it's not going to come out the same if it's not with you. Amen? I rely on him. Do you rely on him? Amen. Praise God. Thank God for what this represents here, the the cup and the bread and, and the cup because it's a continuous remembrance or reminder of what Jesus has done for us. And I think one scripture that I would apply to this besides 1 Corinthians chapter 11 is where Jesus, the Bible says, Paul said this, that for us to remember the grace of God. Say it with me. Remember the grace of God. He said that remembering the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, Yet for your sakes he became poor so that you through his poverty might become rich. And the context of it is literally speaking not of spiritual poverty and spiritual riches. It's literally speaking of natural, material, financial wealth. Are you listening? He became poor in that realm. Only on the cross, though, not in his earthly ministry, but it happened on the cross when he was stripped naked. Amen. And then he was laid in a borrowed tomb. Why buy one when you're going to come out of it? Amen. You just need it for three days. Amen. <laughs> but uh, he, he became poor. He took poor because poverty was part of the curse of sin. And when he took sin on himself, that's when he took the curse of poverty and everything else. And that's where he became poor. But he was never poor in his earthly ministry, and he doesn't require you to be poor in your earthly ministry. Amen? And beside the river. Thank you for watching Demonstrations of Faith, a ministry outreach of Faith Alive Christian Center in Reno, Nevada. If you don't have a home church, we invite you to come and connect with us. We have ministry for the entire family on Sundays at 9 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. and Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. Our Connect Youth Ministry meets on Sunday mornings and Wednesday nights. Child care is available for all services. Our location is 120 Hubbard Way, 
half block east of the Pepper Mill in Reno. You can find us online at faithalive.net or by searching for Faith Alive at all social media outlets. Thanks for watching and join us next week for Demonstrations of Faith. And it's flowing to me.